How is that experience? Because I have never installed NeoVim on Windows. Like, is it a native NeoVim experience? Like, not through WSL, right? Because you you could run it in WSL, but you're basically yeah. running it in Linux, right? So, yeah. is there a native Windows NeoVim package, and does it work? How compatible is it? Yeah, no, it, it works. It works. It runs in Windows Terminal, or I think even like the cmd.exe thing. Uh, it runs in PowerShell. Like we have our build system supports Windows. It uses it requires um, Visual Studio to, which is like the compiler on Windows, to to build it, or you have to install like MinGW or whatever. But no, it works. It's a huge pain in the ass to do, for at least for me, because I'm not like a Windows user. But you can do it. Um, and can you there, there, your, there your some plugins really weird, work and all that stuff? I think so. To be honest, I haven't actually like used NeoVim like like really used it on Windows. I've only like built it to try to debug stuff. But there are some really weird. So so like we were talking about earlier about how the terminal is like confusing to a lot of users. It's even more so on Windows because Windows has to emulate the TTY layer that link that Unix uses. So like we were talking earlier about how there's all these different layers, Tmux, your terminal, right? On on Windows, like you're going through a whole emulation layer, and that that messes a bunch of stuff up. So like we have tests in our test suite in NeoVim that we just skip on Windows because they literally don't work on Windows because they go through this emulation layer. Yeah, so it does work. I know we have we have users that use Windows. They're in the minority for sure. I will say if you are a win, if you are if one of your users or what viewers is watching this is a Windows user and likes NeoVim and wants to contribute, we are we are in desperate need of someone to own be our, like our Windows person on the NeoVim team. So if anyone has any ambitious viewers are like, I want to be on the NeoVim core team, if you come in as, uh, or like can be our Windows person, that would be a really easy way to get in. To get in. Um, what are the requirements? Because, what 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 are you looking for in a person? Uh, so generally in the past, when people have been moved into the core team, it's like a history of good contributions, like understanding development process, um, good like issue triaging, like being able to respond to issues and understand what the, you know, how to being able to like identify what the problem is and solve them. Or you, I mean, it's not like formal. There's no application process or anything. It's you know, when we see people that are consistently helpful and stick around, then we're like, hey, should we add them? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, we don't do it for everybody because not everyone sticks around for a long time. But if people are consistent, then mm -hmm. We usually will add them to like that helper group. And then if someone's in the helper group long enough, then they will often get um, moved in to the to the core team. But I just feel like if someone were someone were to come in and like start solving a bunch of Windows problems, that would, that would get noticed for sure and mm. be very valuable. I'll create a clip out of this and share it as a separate video, like Great. a NeoVim Windows logo in, you know, uh yeah. catchy title. <laughs> We'll see Sounds what happens. Great. Maybe someone shows up. Um, and you were talking about um, operating system. Sorry, I interrupted you there. What, where were no, we? Good. Yeah, I was talking about how I, I switched to using a Mac 